everyone. This is episode two of Lionsverse, a weekly video series here to take you inside the athletic department here at UCCS. Uh, for today's episode, I have had the head coaches for the men and women's cross country team, Mark Mish and Corey Kabatsky. And I think I already butchered your last name. I apologize. Oh, you got it. Oh, perfect. Um, so guys, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to be here today. I really appreciate it. I know you guys have um, busy schedules and things like that. How has training um, been for you guys this year? Yeah, it's been good. Um, I can start and pass it on to Mish, but yeah, obviously practice has looked a little different with the different policies and stuff like that, but um, the teams have done a, a great job of adapting to that. And mm -hmm. to be honest, they're just really happy to, to be back together, working out together and, um, you know, having some sense of normalcy with that. So, um, yeah, it's been awesome to have the team back in action and, um, yeah, they've looked really good so far. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it, truth be told, it's pretty much business as usual. Um, yeah. Both of us, our, our teams are, um, you know, we got a lot, a lot of people that have been doing this for a while. And, and uh, you know, whether it's summertime or now or whatever, I mean, the show goes on. And so, you know, we're probably, as far as the sports world goes, we're probably the least affected people by mm -hmm. all the hoops people jump through and stuff. Um, you know, we, we know we're training is training. And uh, both these teams have been pretty good for a while, so you know the the formula doesn't change, and mm -hmm. and uh, what that what it takes to be good at this. So um, yeah, it's been fine. Uh, I can't complain about it at all. Really, they, they've done a great job, and and it really hasn't been any different. So yeah, it's been fine. That's good. That's good to hear. I know a lot of other um, sports have been struggling with trying to coordinate different practices and. Um, captain-led practices and things like that have you guys had to deal with any of that or you guys are pretty much pretty well, normal our, our team you know pretty much trains year-round whether whether we're there or not you know they're uh, in our sport they have to kind of keep going pretty much year-round so mm -hmm. um, both of us have had you know a lot of athletes here uh, in the summer living and training together and, and just kind of doing their thing without without us being you know too involved with that and uh, so it's pretty seamless to to come in to to normal practice and and kind of go from there. But um, yeah, obviously we're taking the the necessary precautions. But thankfully for us, it's not uh, a huge adjustment on on what we have to do compared to something like basketball or something like that. Right, right. Um, and so as far as like mentality goes, is there a different uh, mentality that you're trying to coach with um, your athletes this year? Because I feel like having not having a national championship to work towards is a somewhat of a letdown as a as a college athlete. Uh, yeah, um, I think it's kind of had a lot to do with just the perspective of this whole process the last six months. You know, I mean, he and I were Corey and I were both at the the indoor the NCAA indoor track and field championships literally at the at the the place, the arena, whatever you want to say, when when the decision was made to pull the plug, which was a, which is a pretty uh, extreme circumstance, you know. I mean, to have traveled halfway around the country with with the best student athletes in in their sport, and then to be there, I mean, it, it'd be like you know, it'd be like running a hundred yards down the football field and somebody tackles you at the one or something, you know. So that was kind of the starting point of, of disappointment, which was a, which was kind of like a, you know, reality of like, what, like, are you kidding me? You know, like, what are you talking about? Like, this Absolutely. is so, so crazy uh, that this decision is made and then have to fly back and get the teams, you know, get everybody else together. And like things were happening so fast. Right. And then kind of, you know, having to make some major decisions and then, you know, not knowing what, not even the next week look like, but months. And I mean, you know, all these things. So, Again, he and I both were pretty fortunate. We've got pretty established programs with a lot of good leadership, and, and the, the continuity has been pretty good throughout. So I think that was the starting point of, like, you, you kind of strip everything down to nothing, right? And then you start slowly clawing back, fighting for anything, you know, whether, yeah. uh, whether that's um, 
practice together, uh, a me season, you know, your conference. I mean, I don't know, you know, like everything, you know, just in not only that, you, you know, there's a lot of other extenuating circumstances like budgets and school. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff, you know? Yeah. So I felt like for us today, where we're at, um, we're very thankful. Um, you know, we had a home meet. We've got another one coming up. We're, we're going to host the conference championship, which wasn't yeah. on the radar. Uh, we've got a lot uh, going. Um, so, you know, relative to comparison, compared to nothing, uh, that's that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. And I, I think um, the other thing was our sport was kind of in a tricky situation because some of the other sports – from the fall, which they're moving to the spring, could could play out a season, but our athletes are also in track and field. And we right. would basically lose an entire year. We wouldn't even have a season at all across country. It would disappear. So, mm -hmm. you know, thankfully it was also classified as a low risk sport. And, you know, we, we lobbied for our sport. We fought for the sport. We said, we can do this, you know, give these people a chance. Otherwise you'll have no chance because they won't come back. Mm -hmm. So that was the starting point. So I think for he, I can't speak for Corey, but I know we both kind of feel this way that everything's a bonus. Mm -hmm. I think the athletes have kind of expressed that too. Um, so yeah, I don't know. That's just kind of where we're at today. We can't really complain uh, when you compare that to, you know, a lot of people around the country who've had yeah. some, some, some decisions made that were handed down to them they had nothing to do with, you know, and they're right. just stuck in a situation. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. For us, I think it's um, yeah, just about appreciating the, the the basics and what's kind of most important in our sport, which is being around your teammates and good people, and um, being able to to train hard. Which thankfully, you know, well, pretty much all of our trainings outside and everything. Right. And then you know the opportunities to compete look different this year for us. I mean, we're not flying all over the country and racing in different teams, but we're thrilled for any opportunity that we have to compete right now. And so we've created right. some here at home and whether it's a dual meet with 27 people in the race or, or whatever, like it's um, certainly, you know, feels great to be able to go out there and, and have that opportunity when, uh, you know, we know a lot of other people don't have that right now. So yeah, right. it's kind of focusing on the basics and, and what's most, most important and kind of like Mark said, just, kind of stripping it down to, to, you know, the essentials. Running's running. Great, right, exactly. You guys are um, very fortunate that you guys still get to compete, which, um, by the way, congratulations on sweeping the Rust Buster. Um, you guys did really, really good, both the men's and the women's team um, did amazing there. And Hannah Ellis and um, Afwerki Zeru. Um, getting runners of the RMAC runners of the week, week, that's awesome too um, for your athletes. Um, how has how, how did the rust buster look this year compared to other years um and then um what can we kind of expect from your athletes moving forward yeah it was obviously a much smaller meet than we usually have maybe four or five teams in that race and this year we intentionally kept it to a to a dual meet because we knew it would be kind of one of the first first things on the schedule and mm -hmm. uh, yeah so it was a lot smaller but um Kind of like a good testing the waters meet for for the future yeah definitely exactly and so but um the excitement of the the people on the team was pretty high good. first time to race in a long long time so uh from a performance standpoint that, that was great and hannah ran the the fastest ever time by a uccs woman on on uh, that course and we had uh, I think 10 of the top 25 all-time UCCS times come out of that race on, on the women's side. And, um, yeah, it's from a performance standpoint, really good, uh, despite it being a very small race. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think what Coach said about the opportunity is, I mean, normally that meets a small meet anyway by design, mm -hmm. and hence the name Rust Buster. You know, right, it, right. we started 13 years ago. And it was never designed to be a big, now some years it was big, bigger, but, uh, you know, but I think that one thing that's still unique about the sport is like, if you line up in a cross country race, 
Um, obviously, like you mentioned, Hannah and Aki, they both had, you know, they're both outstanding runners. But the truth is, everybody else in that race is battling for, a, I mean, whether there's 100 people or 25 or 50, unless you're winning the race, the field's good enough. I mean, you know, it's like, you, you, you know, so I think that's one thing is you don't necessarily have to be in a conference championship meet every week in order for it to be, you know, uh, highly competitive. Sure. Um, this meet we're doing Friday will be highly competitive. It's a small meet, but it's going to be good uh, for sure. So I think that's kind of, you know, in terms of the meet itself, like Coach said, uh, the last – it was the first collegiate sporting event in the state of Colorado since March, mm -hmm. uh, this little dual meet, you know. And it was the first college cross-country meet in Division Two in, in this country in, in this season. So that was kind of cool, like on both those things, be like, okay, we did that. We were glad we just got to have that meet, kind of keep the tradition of having the Rust Buster, and we didn't miss it. And then um, and Fort Lewis was kind enough to, to make the trip over and uh, get their season started. Mm -hmm. And I really, I really felt like for everybody involved that night, um, it was just like a celebration. I mean, really, it was like a victory. I mean, we've been through so much junk in the last six months uh, on a lot of levels. And I think just to have it and then and everybody there just be like, this is great. Let's go. You know, like this is let's show you. Know, let's get this going again. Let's let let's get life going. You know, let's yeah. do this. And um, I think that was the main thing that came out of it was it was a success no matter what people ran or, or, or whatever. We just wanted to do it. And once we got in the books, it just kind of felt like, all right, let's 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 keep rolling. You know, like yeah. there's no, no point of looking back now. So I don't know. I felt like it was great. I, and Corey said this, too. I mean, it's funny. I've been coaching a long time 25 years or whatever and and i mean i've seen a lot of stuff and then part of some neat things but there's no way i'm ever going to forget that that dinky dual meet is going to be up there uh in all time because of all the circumstances that created it right right you know so that's kind of my perspective on it and yeah the guys we got a big team you know some guys ran great some ran average a couple had subpar days that's part of the sport but overall it was a really successful day so yeah yeah it definitely looked like it was um and you mentioned earlier before that we are now um hosting the rmac championship so that's a big deal for uccs um so talk to me about what you guys are doing to kind of plan ahead for that or what um, the process to be able to get that bid was <laughs> you want to have it corey <laughs> well yeah so when it, it kind of came out that, that Mines was was not going to be able to host this year. Um, we kind of jumped on the on the opportunity and with the support of a lot of the other coaches in the in the conference because you know, a pretty central location and good good facilities, good hotels, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, you know, in, in cross country you get to host the championships once every sixteen years or so. I think twenty twenty eight was twenty was yeah. The, is the next time we're we're scheduled to host after hosting in 2012, and uh, so yeah, we we were happy to to take it on and uh, have the opportunity to to host on our home course. And um, I think you know part of that was both Mark and I, and also you know our, our athletic director Nate, you know really felt like we could provide a, a good experience for for the student athletes and and something to to kind of look forward to, you know, this year, even though there's not nationals, uh, mm -hmm. to have a good championship event that, that, uh, that we would be proud of hosting and, and that would, would be meaningful for the student athletes. So, um, that, that kind of led to us pushing for it and yeah, we're happy to have it. Obviously a lot of work goes into that and we've been working on it since we found out we'd get it or before actually, but, um, yeah, we're excited about it. That's awesome. No, that's um, going to be really exciting. It's going to be nice to be able to kind of start this season and then end the season here at on like your own home, home course, essentially. For sure. Um, it feels like, does it feel like a, like a home field advantage or because you kind of hosted so many before that it's um, yeah. pretty normal? Well, I mean, I think for our kids, it's huge. You know I mean? The students, it's like, you know, what wasn't expected, you know, like, uh, you know, 
if somebody told me last spring we we're hosting three home cross country meets this fall and, and one of them was on a course we've never run a golf course and the other one is the conference meet i would have been like what are you talking about you know how did get, i mean most years you host one you know because you don't go to very many you know like right. you know and then and then you know when it's your turn host conference you know for years in advance i mean you know like you kind of plan around it so yeah. like Corey said, we hosted in 2012. We host, we've hosted a ton of meets on that course. We know, you know, it's not like we're reinventing the wheel. It's right. just, you know, we want to cross the T's, dot the I's, make it a great experience, do all the little things. You know, you got the media services and the, you know, awards and the hoopla, you know, all the little things, the, the announcement. But but the, but the race is running is running. And the race is a race. You know, it doesn't matter if anybody's there or not. You know, I mean, you still shoot the gun and you go, go do the thing. So I think though in terms of it being an advantage i think yes because anytime you've trained very specifically on a course and you know all the little things you know where people are going to have a tendency to be make mistakes or be too aggressive or you know all the little things that could add up to help you then sure and i think also both of our teams you know going back to last year you know the expectations were really high this fall. I mean, we both had come out. You know, you're coming out of national championship meets. You're returning a ton of good people. Mm-hmm. The, the team's training their tail off. March, April, May, June, July. You know, with uncertainty. So I I think that because the conference is so good. I mean, it's the best conference in Division Two in cross country. I mean, there's you know it's not unheard of that you're going to have four of the top ten teams in the country in the conference meet. You know. Uh, sometimes three in the top five. So for them, it's it's like a national championship. And we kind of joke in normal years, it's like our national championships comes in three races. There's conference, regionals, and nationals. And it's the same people that are you're fighting against. I mean, there's years you have got people that can make all, all American, they don't make all conference. Mm-hmm. And that's happened. It's not unheard of. So I don't think there was any letdown whatsoever. I think, in fact, it was a huge shot in the arm when, you know, when that came came to fruition for us, it was just, it was almost like validation for their work to be like, you know, all right, not only are we going to get a chance to compete, we're going to get to have this thing on our home course, you know, which means a lot to those upperclassmen. So right. we're going to certainly do everything in our power to, to make it a great day for those people and you know whatever happens after that's icing on the cake we're we're working on another possibility out actually that'd be a meet after that but that's yet to be finalized but um mm-hmm. but anyway that's yeah it's awesome to have the RMAC championships in Monument Valley Park yeah it's super exciting and you guys don't feel like you're scrambling at all to do some planning for this at all no we've hosted so many meets there and Good. we kind of know the routine and um business as yeah. usual we got a good we got a good crew behind us too you know because yeah. you know obviously normally with all the other sports that that would be going on they would be kind of one more thing but when when those are kind of on the on the sideline for a bit then you know there's extra hands you know whether it's an administrative department or, or sports media or whatever you know there's there oh this is exciting you know like there's a little bit more time to you know put into yeah. something so i think that's why Corey said for us it's really not a stress it's kind of business as usual that's awesome um switching gears just a little bit before um we kind of started this we were mark you and i were talking about how you um and Corey have known each other for a few years um so how has it been coaching with with Corey? oh it's horrible I just, <laughs> <laughs> i'm looking for a new job all the time you know i'm not gonna embarrass him but I'm, you know, I know that I'm very fortunate. You know, I w- first of all, you know, you, in life you go through and, you know, you have a job or whatever. But there's a difference between a, your job is like it's not just a vocation; it's like what your calling is. You know, and you feel and 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 coaching is unique. You know, it's not nine to five, Monday to Friday. I mean, you you know, you're you you live through the ebb and flow of the year, cross country, indoor, outdoor, you know, your travel, you, you know, you go through so many things with people. And and even though like he, yeah, he's had women's coach and had men's coach, but the teams, you know, they also live vicariously through each other's successes. And, and I mean, they're still competing and battling and training hard. I mean, they're all good friends, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, you, you go through enough stuff, but to be able to go through your career and, or at least, you know, the bulk of it, and you're getting to work with somebody that you 
not only get you you know, know well, but you you really enjoy being with, you know, and that's and that's fun because like, you know, I could tr like whatever that the situation may be, you know, I might not have the answer. Like it'd be training, could be a lot of stuff. And I'll say, hey, what do you think of this? And I know that his answer is going to be well, you know, there's a there's a point to it. And I, and I trust it. Also, thankfully, I work with him because since I'm older and don't don't know anything about technology, oh. he's the guy that can that fixes all those problems. So. I'm more of the, the, the hands-on guy, like, just get me out of the office. He, he'll take care of all the problems. So <laughs> that, that's the most important thing. He's got youth on his you, side. Right? No, he's just smarter. He went to watch you, man. So, like, that's, you got to be a brain to be in there. So anyway, but no, it's, I, you know, I mean, mean, mean that seriously. When I look around the country, you know, we obviously have been doing this a while, and you got colleagues at different schools. Um, a, I'm thankful I was given the chance to begin with back in 2007 when Kirk, Steve Kirkham hired me, and then he gave us a lot of grace. Dave Harmer was on the scene at the time, too, and the program evolved, and, and we were given, you know, opportunities to form our staff the way we wanted to and also really been supported to run the program the way we felt we should, you know, like with, our, with the values in place um, that were important to us. And that's something that's easy to take for granted. And when you talk to people around the country and their situations, and they're very, very different, maybe mm -hmm. because of just things out of their control or just even the, the things on their plate. And I think that we're in a position where he and I probably, we're very thankful. We probably couldn't ask for more than, than having the, the opportunities that we have. I mean, I'm just, I'm speaking for myself, but. Yeah, for uh, sure. So yeah, other than Corey being a pain in the rear, <laughs> it's great <laughs> no. Good, hey, good. Wait, other than his mom and dad and his wife's mom and dad is the first person to see his kid when he was born. So that that yeah, counts. That's true. Right? Yeah. Good, yeah. Good. It's. I think it's important. You know, like one thing that that really makes it work is, you know, obviously, you have two coaches. They're going to see different training situations differently or different you know, make different decisions on on whatever. But um, we we share a lot of the same core values and and kind of the philosophy of how we want to run our program and what we value in terms of, uh, you know, developing people and, and stuff like that. And so to share an office with, with somebody like that is, is really important because you, you might have disagreements on the little decisions, but the, but the big stuff, you, you know, you're, you're aligned on that and we work really, really well together with that stuff. So yeah, it's been, it's been awesome. Well, it definitely shows in the results um, of all the meets that you guys are in with your athletes as well. Um, what has been, what's the most challenging part of being a coach? And then what's the best part about being a coach? <laughs> um, well, the best part is, is practice and races. Right. <laughs> but that's, that's, you know, maybe 10, 20% of the job, right? Right. Um, so yeah, just being able to, I, I think Mark would agree, you know, we, we work with a, a phenomenal group of student athletes. I mean, just really, really high quality people. And uh, so that's, that's the best is, is to have the opportunity to, to work with those people who are so driven um, and so supportive of each other. I think that's, that's awesome. Uh, can't be better than that. The most challenging part, I don't know. Getting practice logs in on time, <laughs> <laughs> something like <Easy>. that. <laughs> awesome. Uh, oh man, yeah. I, thinking about coaching is, um, you know, it's never boring. I mean, there's always the, the challenges. You're, you're always intellectually challenged. You're always like, I mean, you're always being. There's a stimulus of like trying to figure out. Uh, you know the, the the decisions day to day i mean like it doesn't you, you can't be on top of the mountain very long i mean there's always a new situation whether it's an injury and illness a, a strategic situation you know you're trying to figure out things so you're never like on cruise control like right. you, if you were it'd be too boring obviously you like it you, you like it when there's not as many challenges like you, you want to see everybody line up 100 percent go out there and rip it but we also know that's not always the case so you have you're always thinking through things, constantly thinking through op um, possibilities, options, race plans, um, how to maximize the opportunity that your people have, the group of people you have individually and collectively. 
there's a there's the combination of the intellectual side um there's you know the science uh there's the relationship side emotional there's also just that gut intuition it factor part that you can't quantify and can't learn a book there's things you just have to live through but the one thing about coaching which i would tell anybody is that you know whether you're coaching a a young person like a, a middle school student or you're coaching a international athlete. I mean, both Corey and I have coached post collegiate people who've competed, you know, national championships, international championships, um, you know, whatever. So both ends of the, the spectrum. And at the end of the day, people are people. I mean, there's no difference, right? Everybody's got struggles. Um, everybody bleeds red blood, you know, I mean, you just, just because different people are at different levels of talent on the spectrum at a certain time in their life doesn't change who they are as a person. Right. And that's kind of always been something I've tried to stick with, you know, um, that at the end of the day, you know, no, no matter what we're achieving out here, obviously we want to do great. Um, but there has to be about a lot more than that, that they're going to walk away with because you want to have a relationship with that person for the rest of your life. You know, Mm -hmm. and it can't be based on a PR or a school record or a national qualifying time or 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 an accolade. Like it just doesn't that won't hold up very well. Mm -hmm. So I think that the 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 coolest thing about coaching, again, it's it's always challenging, but everybody has a chance to you know, like you're part of their story. So regardless of where they are in the program, your best person, you know, a guy a guy or gal that was that fought for a year to make the walk-on standard and then made it on your squad and i mean everybody has a story everybody's got a value everybody has an experience that's going on and that's cool to be part of that like just a little piece of that you know and the longer you do that the more that's like a snowball it grows over time like you refer you refer to those things and you you know especially when things are tough and you're getting your tail kicked in and you know life just beating you up and you're like man what's going on you, you you can look at those those things and say, yeah, it's worth it. You know, yeah. it's worth it. So the toughest thing about coaching is that I've been doing this a long time. And um, I think you, it's it's impossible not to care too much. You know, right. like, like, like you inherently want people to have a good experience. Right. And you're trying to figure out the ways to make that happen. Whether the kid's injured and they're in the swimming pool <laughs> Or somebody's just gone through, you know, a gut wrenching, you know, into their career, like what happened last spring or, you know, like just things you can't really control much of, you know, but you still carry that weight with you a little bit because you're 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 kind of the the person that understands it. Right. right? Kind of the person that gets it. And you, you, you I don't know, like you just you want them to have a great experience and, and you realize part of life. It's like raising a kid, right? You got to let them fall out of the tree once in a while. You know, you got to you got to let things happen because part of growing up, it's part of getting molded and and growing. And um, so that's kind of tough. It's a balance, right? You know, between right. letting people kind of just learn some things the tough way sometimes, and other times, you know, wanting to guide them along. And say, let me let me tell you something. I, I've already read read this book. I can tell you it's going to end. So if you listen to me, you're, you're going to avoid that. You know what I mean? It's kind right. of tough. But because we're all that way, right? We're, we're all that right. way. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's how we are as humans, right? We Sometimes we got to see how close we can get to the stove without getting burned. But Absolutely. Well, good. Um, again, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to talk to me. Um, good luck with the rest of your season. We'll probably bring you back on here to talk about what to expect before um, our MAC championships and things like that. Um, Mountain Lion Nation, we will um, be back next week, hopefully with um, the men's golf coach, to talk about um, their upcoming season and a few of the meets that they've just had. Um, you guys enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thanks, Holly. Thanks for having Thanks us. So much Appreciate it. Again. Thank you so much for coming. Um, coming on here today. All right. All right. You guys are great.